Frazier are here on board. Um, just like we did for the last press conference, I'm going to let the, in, the, the media here ask the first round of questions, and then we'll go to the, to the Zoom calls. Uh, Coach, if you don't mind opening up with an uh, opening statement or two, please. Sure. Um, thank you for everyone who's here and uh, coming out to Columbus, Ohio, and playing a really special venue. To be in the horseshoe is uh, uh, there's that little kid inside me, you know, uh, watching all those football games growing up. Came to a football game here once, uh, watched uh, a Penn State, Ohio State football game. So to be uh, uh, a player uh, and a coach on this field is really special. Um, I coach Green Bay. I'm, uh, I'm very fortunate to coach Warriors. And, um, and that's why this hurts, because the ride's over. We've been fortunate the last two uh, full seasons, in 19 and 21, to finish our seasons holding up the national championship trophy. And, um, and, and that, uh, it, so it's hard to not have the Final Four be a part of the Virginia lacrosse season. Um, but there's a reason it's ended, and it's because we've just faced, in my opinion, the best team in the last 16 years. Uh, biased, of course. But uh, when I think about the great teams of all time in college lacrosse, I think about 1990, Syracuse Orangemen. 16 years later, it was the Virginia Cavaliers, 2006, the undefeated season that Dom Starja led his team with, having only one close game the whole way. I think the Maryland Terrapins, another 16 years later, uh, belong in that upper, upper echelon. Uh, there just isn't a weakness. Their offense, prolific. We fell into a zone. For those uh, who know me and my coaching style, I despise zone defense. Uh, Cole Kastner and Kate Southstead made the zone look good. Matt Hughes made some saves with it. It slowed down Maryland a bit. But um, you know, it, we, we knew we had to find something else because the first time we played Maryland, they torched us. Um, the other end of the field, we struggled to create good offensive looks. We struggled to win matchups today. Maryland's defense was outstanding, both their long sticks and their short sticks. And when we did get by him, Bobby McNamee and the goal, wow. It's a, uh, it's a team that there's just not a weak spot. When you look at Weirman, what he's done at the face of all season, and not only winning possessions, but pushing transition, Finding Owen Murphy on that point, it's uh, it, it, it sort of stuck as a defensive coach. Are we going to let 52 run right in and shoot? Are we going to let 55 shoot with some pressure on his hands? They're, they're scoring goals. They're, they're, they're scoring goals in multiple ways. Um, even in that third quarter, when those first three goals they had, it wasn't 66 based. It was a failed clear, it was a failed ride, it was another loose ball. They're just finding the balls, getting ground balls, and creating offense. I think this is a really, really special team that John Tillman's built. <clears throat> and one that is with this team we just talked about, we are going to learn from. We recognize that last year's national championship game um, was the impetus for Maryland to take their team to the next level. Now it's our turn. Watch this team, study this team, uh, learn from this. So we come back in 2023 at a different level, at an all-time new level for Virginia Lacrosse. With Viner Four Gates, you've heard the phrase, we make your company work. What that means to us is that we take care of every ticket, every call, all the time. If you're tired of waiting on hold for tech support, or it takes too long for your tech support company to get back to you in an email, try Viner Four Gates. We're making your company work is our primary mission. Thank you very much. We'll open it up over here to the left, Jeff. <clears throat> Lars, it's been four years since you had to talk to your team after a season and you lost. We you had them gathered around you on the field after the game and what, without disclosing anything, you don't want to, but what was the message to you guys? Yeah, a, uh, I, I couldn't be more grateful for them. We have reduced interference within our program, um, you know, self-inflicted wounds, this is a nice, use, nice euphemism, hasn't been a part of our program in the last couple of years. I'm so grateful to this group of men that they have kept the focus on lacrosse. We have 
done so much. Um, overcame some injuries this year. Just couldn't overcome the Maryland Terrapins. We learned that the first time. And, um, and then facing them here in the quarterfinals, we knew. We knew we, after the first time we played Maryland that we would see them again if we held up our end of the bargain. If we made sure we won our playoff games. And um, so we knew we'd see them again. Um, they, uh, so we, we talked a little bit about, you know, what can we, what can we take away? And there'll be more, more than that, but we said, what, what can we take away from how Maryland was composed, um, uh, their skill set, the way they approached the game? So I'm, uh, it's a heck of a team, but it's, it's also building up a heck of a rivalry. It's, uh, that's already been there. We already know that Virginia Maryland has a great history, and it's going to continue into the future. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, for both the players, you guys talked about the bar that Maryland set for you. You've been working hard to get closer to it. Today, did you feel like you were closer to being competitive, or how did you feel your progress went? If you don't mind, just lean into the microphone a little bit, guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, Maryland's an unbelievable team, and they do such a fantastic job of you know, raising that bar every time we play them. Um, and I think we all, coming into this game, had a good feeling that we were going to go in and put our best foot forward. And, um, you know, they're a fantastic team. They did a great job, and I thought we were inching close to that. There are definitely possessions there. We could see it. You know, we were going back and forth and, and did a good job battling with them. But at the end of the day, you know, they kept raising the bar. It's a really impressive team. So. Yeah, I think. Um Watching film when the last time we played them, uh, they just capitalized on all of our, all of our mistakes. And I think the fir that first half, we, we kind of personally for me, and like, we struggled with the pick play. I think we, I, I personally could have used picks better. Um, that was one of our game plan going in. Um, we kind of strayed away from that, and, and they're so they're so good behind the net. Um, the way they hedge, I think that was something that they that we were aware of. But I think they really it slows the the attack down when they. Get that shorty to pop you out, and you're dodged now. You're standing still. Um, so they just did a good job of just slowing, slowing the attack down, slowing the midfielders down. Um, I thought Jeff had a great game dodging, um, but again, they're just the way they outlet the ball is is very, very good. They, that, that goalie will just throw it, pop it all the way over, and I'm looking. There's no guy there, and then I look behind. They have fast break. Um, so I know that's something that. We'll get better at. I know I won't be there, but I know uh, we'll come back next year. Uh, Matt, can you just give us a few seconds on what lacrosse has meant for you? Since I guess this is the last time we're going to see you in one of these. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was talking to, to Jeff um, earlier this week, and I've been committed to UVA since I was, I think it was 2013. Um, <laughs> so it's been in my mind for a while now. It's been my whole life. Um, Obviously, academics are, are kind of the top priority, but at the same time, that, that stress of academics is taken away um, by the cross. Um, and yeah, I mean, this this group every year is just a, it's a different it's a different challenge. Um, it's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, obviously, this is this is one of the down downsides, but at the same time, could be more grateful for for Lars and the coaching staff um, and the athletic program as a whole. So. I mean, how cool is it? I mean, Matt's graduating. Spent five years with us, leaving as the all-time scoring leader in UVA across history, uh, leaving with a senior class award, leaving as a top five draft pick, two national championships, captain, and a master's degree. So, Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> Man, we're gonna miss this guy. We're gonna miss him a lot. Go ahead, guys. Lars, Lars, you know. Talk about Maryland shorts. It yeah. seems that they're that heart of that defense because it just works out that way. And Matt mentioned how they just have a way of behind the net. You can't get them, can you? Yeah, they, I remember feeling that in the first quarter of the national championship game last year. The first quarter, we were struggling to get by them. But obviously some things kind of, we got going from there. Sean Kerwin was able to create some hedges and slip off the hedges of the picks and find Peyton Cormier inside on some tight little windows that we just didn't find today. But you're right, I I tried to congratulate all four of the short seat teammates today during the handshake line. Like, man, we couldn't run by you. Their, their ability to get their hands on our, our offensive base was exceptional. 
and, and let's not forget what you know, 3650 Connor Schellenberger too, right? I mean, and, and, and Brett McCarr did a really nice job on that. So, but you can have really great close defensemen. If your short stick defenders, for the most part, are gonna give up some good dodges, it creates a defense sliding, and then matchups change, and now you've got some good advantages with Matt and Connor. When did you see Matt without 43 on him? When did you see Connor without 36 on him? Because those short CD minis weren't losing their matchups. And uh, it was really, really impressive. Meanwhile, at the other end, we, we were playing zone. You know, and we had to be ready to slide in our man to man, which is deadly. But Lisnowskis is rolling around out there. The Mayo hammered those goals in the first quarter, stretching our defense against our zone and our man. It, you, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the very appropriate question. You have short seat teammates like Maryland does. Good luck breaking down that defense. Go ahead, then. Pat. Uh, Coach, um, you and Coach Tony, you know, you guys go back to the Ivy League, and now you guys have played each other a bunch. I know you guys share a friendship um, and you know, a history on and off the field. Um, I saw you guys talking to each other after the game, which was a sharing moment there. Uh, what's it like just to compete against Coach Tony out there? You know, get to compete against not only you know, a great coach and a great program, but also a friend. Right. I appreciate this question. I know, uh, you know the, the rivalry of Maryland versus Virginia lacrosse, like I said earlier, has great history, and it's going to have a great future. So I could see you know, a Maryland fan or Virginia fan saying, I, I wish the coaches didn't like each other as much, or maybe didn't respect each other as much, You know, because, man, I can get the blood boiling being a part of these games. I mean, here we are, the third year in a row, we've met in the NCAA tournament. You know, and there is no tomorrow for one of those two teams. So it's, it's painful. You know, uh, it's, it's really painful play these games and, but I just the, the utmost respect for how John Tillman the acquisition of talent the recruiting the development of that talent and then the third phase the systems the schemes that you put those men in they're buttoned up they know their systems they know their system. there's there's comprehension there so he, he and his staff they do a fantastic job so having John Tillman as, uh, as someone, as a friend, not only helps me become a better coach, it pushes me to become a better coach. I just, I think John just, he just, he gets it. He know, he, he, he's pursuing national championships at the University of Maryland, but he puts people first. We'll have a couple.